Greetings, YouTube. Give me a second here. Get this lighting in here going. Make this video while I still got light here. It's still quite well. It's the early evening. All right. Today is Wednesday, so you know what that means. Um, every Wednesday, I make a video on a different topic not related to language learning. So today's video is going to be on in on becoming an entrepreneur what it takes the steps the failures when well, i'm basically just going to share my experience as i've been doing this since 08. so that's our topic for today so let's get into it so first of all many of you know i teach languages for a living as a private private teacher okay i don't teach any in any institution or whatnot um, i started doing it in, at ohio state i was just a regular af athlete ath athletic at I was teaching athletes, football players, basketball players, and certain for um, certain languages. Um, primarily football. It was that was probably the most uh, time I spent with. I sp yeah, I spent the most time with the football players. I was um, tutoring Zulu, and I tutored some other languages as well, such as Japanese, um, <coughs> Swahili, um, tutored a little Russian, um, and I think that was it. It was about four languages, and basically how that worked. Um, they just go by your, they go by your, um, <clears throat> they will, yeah, they, they may, they mainly go by your, uh, the class. They, if they see that you took that class and say, they will ask you, say, did you, you know, you have experience in this class. And if you have experience, then they'll use you. So I took like Russian, I took like one-on-one -on -one there when I was at OSU at one point and they saw that and, um, they said, okay, since you took that class, maybe you can be some help to this, this guy here. So I took that on, um, yeah um so i started doing that and um, i was a bit surprised because they actually contacted me i wasn't i wasn't looking for um, a job or anything at the time because i was graduating you know senior and and, and senior senior there and um, i was just kind of concentrating on finishing up school and whatnot but when they contacted me asked me if i wanted to do that and i was like wow i was like you know something told me was like yeah well, why not you know if it doesn't work out you know, just stop doing it. Don't even, don't even pursue it. Stop doing that and do what you you were doing before. So, um, so I started doing that, and then like I was spending a lot of time. I was basically tutoring people every day, and they weren't paying me that much. I don't think I was making like I can't remember like seven fifty, eight dollars an hour or something like that. You know, but I didn't really care about the money because I'm I was already passionate for helping the pe for, for 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 helping people. And the fact that it was it was dealing with languages, so you know, I thought it was fun, you know. So um, I did that, and then as time went by, I think I did it for about six months or something like that, five or six months. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking one day I was sitting there, I was like, you know what, I could probably do this by myself. Get some flyers, put them up, advertise these services and whatnot. You know, tell people that I can help them with this, help them with that, and you know. At the time, I had my YouTube channel, so I'm saying, okay, I can show them my YouTube channel, show them that I'm really, I'm genuinely interested in language learning, and I'm, I'm very serious about this. So I used that, I put flyers up, and um, I got contacted by a few people. You know, um, I was optimistic at the time. I wasn't really thinking like, oh, no one's going to contact me. I don't have any experience. I never tutored before like that. And well, if you want to count the tutoring up there at the university, that's the only experience I had. So I said, you know, um, I'm going to go ahead and get this a shot. I have nothing to lose. If, if it doesn't work out, nobody wants to get tutored. Just, you know, just give it up, you know. And um, it didn't take long. I was like, I think I put my flyers up. A couple, couple weeks later, I got contacted by someone. They said, yeah, I saw your flyers and, and, you know, I'm interested in getting help with Japanese. I'm in my third year of Japanese and, and I feel that I can be better. I, I can barely speak the language and, you know, I want to um, I want to see what you have to offer and see if um, I can get better in Japanese. So I said, yeah, sure, man. And, you know, I explained to him my program and stuff. He did his little research, you know, and he came back. He's like, yeah, man, I, I, I like what you're doing. I saw your stuff on YouTube and. You know, uh, I want to give it a shot. I want to sign up. And he signed up. I met him. We met in a Jimmy John's place. I still remember. And he tr he tried to, well, first, when he, con no, he contacted me. He actually tried to write in Japanese. I still remember. 
And then when we met in person, he was trying to converse with me in Japanese. And, you know, he was trying, but you can tell that he was like, he wasn't really comfortable, like 100%. And he had stopped and we sat down and talked about it. And um, he signed up, he paid me and we, you know, I helped him with the Japanese. I showed him some, some techniques and whatnot. And, and he went back to his class, he was taking a class and this was by word of mouth. He went. He went back. He was. He was in the class and using the stuff that we learned on a teacher. And then a couple of students in the class were curious, like, "Where, where are you? You know, what are you doing? And how you learn all this?" And he told them about me. And then they actually, those two girls came to me. One of they they came to one of our classes and they sat there and watched us to see what we were doing. And then after the, after the class was over, the, we I talked to them. They said. They say we're interested. We want to do what he's doing. You know, we I like the way that you you're teaching, and I want to learn like that. And I took them on. So I had three students from Ohio State in the Japanese program. You know, so from there I had, I had got another student. Then I used Craigslist. Um, I was getting people from there. I mean, it was just, it was it was good. I was doing really really good. You know, and I was like, wow. You know, what if I just sit, just just turn this down and, and, and not gave it a chance? You know, I want to have these, these these many opportunities and see that helped me with my experience. You know, me teaching now, the experience that I got, like at the university, helping those athletes and then getting those students over the years, that actually helped me because I had some failures, you know, and I'm going to talk about those in a minute. So, um, so basically, before I get into that, you just have to when you have an idea, you want to capitalize on that idea. You know, even if it sounds stupid to someone else, if someone is down you out and say, oh, you shouldn't do that and, you know, do this and do that, don't listen to them. You got to listen to your heart. So if you want to become an entrepreneur, you have to always remember that you have to capitalize on the ideas that you come up with. You can't just let any idea slide because you don't know what that idea is going to take. You just, you, you know, you just have to capitalize on it. If it doesn't work, you you have nothing to lose. What do you, what, what do you got to lose? Just try it. If it doesn't work, move on to the next idea. You know, you got to keep it. You got to keep it moving, keep it moving. But you can't give up. You know, even if you start off slow, if you start off slow, you got to keep it going. And, you know, <clears throat> as time goes by, if you have this, um, if you believe in what you're doing and you know that you're going to be successful and it's going to be a lot more successful in the future, you keep doing that. You follow your own heart. Don't listen to anybody else. Now, you do want to, it's good to have some support. But you don't want to you want to stay away from people who are down you and telling you that you shouldn't do this shouldn't do that because that's something that they wouldn't do, you know, because that's the reality of it. They telling you not to do that because that's something that they wouldn't do because they don't have the courage you know, and, 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 and don't have the willpower to get out there to do that. So you got to be real strong when you consider becoming an entrepreneur. OK, so ideas, ideas, ideas. That's what being an entrepreneur is all about. Ideas, you know. Nobody's telling you you should do this. You know, you can get some advice from some of you, but essentially it's your own idea. You just capitalize on it. You're capitalizing on that idea. So um, some failures. I'm going to talk about some failures that I, I encounter over the years. OK, so one thing I I, um, I had to because uh, I had my, my teaching, my teaching methods have changed over years because of working with different students. And I realized that I couldn't, um, I was teaching a certain way and it wasn't working. Um, I can't even remember how I was doing it, but um, I, I was doing something and it was working for some students and some other students it wasn't working for. So I had to switch up a lot of stuff and I had to, I, it was, there was a lot of trial and error. So I said, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this out and see how this works. You know, I did a lot. Of, I did a lot of that. You know, um, when I say failure, I'm not saying that they weren't successful learning the language or whatnot. Because all the students I work with, they they learned a lot. They learned they they learned a lot more with me than they learned in the class. You know, I was always able to do that. But there were times when um, I tried certain things and they didn't work, and I felt uncomfortable, and I felt that I had to change it up. You know, that's part of that's part of failure. That's part of things that when things don't work out your way and you don't feel fully comfortable I call that a failure because you have to you know because of that it wasn't working out for you you have to change it you have to find a different way to make uh, to, um, to make it feel more comfortable for you you know so I had to do that a lot 
And um, I'm glad I did. You have to go through trial and error. It's very important because you, if you don't, then how are you going to learn? You, you can't learn anything if you don't go through trial and error. So I learned a lot through that. I learned that um, now, now what I, when I work with a student, you know, I can use the same method, but I've worked with a student for one week. I pick up on them, like how they learn and whatnot, and I can cater to them more. I can use, um, I can still use my own method, but I can do it a certain way that will that will be effective for them, that will fit them because of the way they learn. Now, see, had not went through the trial and errors and and, and and switched things up, I wouldn't be able to do that. I have a strong sense now of what I need to do with a with a particular student, and that's a skill that I acquired over the years through experience working with different people. You know, so um, I'm really thankful for that, and um, I'm, I'm, I was able to. I was able to uh, remain strong, keep going. You know, you got to be patient when you're an entrepreneur. That's really, you got to be real patient. You know, if you don't, if you're expecting to earn all this money at this at this point, at, at a certain point in time, without enough time going by, then that's going to affect your, your motivation to keep going with what you're doing and to improve things. And um, it's, you're not going to want you're not going to want to go through the trial and errors and stuff because you don't have that motivation. So you have to be patient. So me definitely what helped me is patience, optimism and staying positive because you have to stay positive too. You know, as I said before, you want to um get away from people who are negative telling you that you shouldn't do this because you know that that stuff is not healthy. It's really not healthy for you. Um, what else should I mention about being an entrepreneur? It really is. It's not that really that difficult. It's simple. It's just like ideas, being patient, um, staying strong. Um, what else? You know, willing to go through the, the trials and errors, and but that goes that's the hand in hand with the patience and stuff. But there's, I mean, if you can be, if you if you follow those, you 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 can be successful. But the ideas, that's right there, is probably. That's what's going to get you started. When you think of something, you have an idea, you know, say, you know what, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try this. You have to, you have to be very curious. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. And you know, you, 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 you don't have anything to lose. Um, if it doesn't work, then you just go on to the next idea. But that's what being an entre entrepreneur about. Anybody will tell you that being an entrepreneur is about ideas. That's what it is. Things just don't don't just appear, you know, you're making this money and doing this, that that stuff. You just didn't wake up the next day and it's like, oh, I'm doing this now. No, it takes some thought, a lot of thought process, you know, when you're coming up with different ideas on how this can work. Because you have to have a plan, too. When you have that idea, you have to plan it out and then you have to uh, start it, you know, execute that plan and spend how much ever time on it to see where it goes and if it's if you're successful you feel good with it and you, you want to keep going then you just keep going keep going keep, spend more time doing spend more time but if it doesn't work out and you know if it doesn't work out and it's not going in the direction that you wanted to go in then you just stop and just do something else that's all you have that's all you do you know and uh yeah it's that simple so that is it i just want to uh ramble a little bit about that um, that's the topic for today, being an entrepreneur and what it takes to be an entrepreneur. That's what I'm going to title this video, what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, not about that. But uh, yeah, thanks for viewing. And um, oh man, I forgot. Oh my God. I can't believe I forgot something. I have to mention my Patreons. I have a new Patreon page. And I, that's part of my little regimen here. When I make these videos, I got to mention people that had contributed to my Patreon page. That, that's part of my perks. So, um, all right. So I got, uh, let me see. I got a total of six Patreons now. So I got two more yesterday. So I'm gonna start from the list. Now this order is, this is the order that they, that I got these Patreons, okay? So Trevor McVitie. That's my very first Patreon. He contributed a dollar uh, to my Patreon. Thanks a lot, Trevor. I uh, appreciate that. Drew G. Uh, he contributed $5. Michael 
uh, Michael Brigola contributed five dollars. Sakita Martin contributed five dollars. MC MC Tapera he he contributed five dollars, and then Ryan Ford contributed a dollar. So thanks a lot. I really do appreciate it. And um, if you guys know what Patreon is, it's basically I'll let you guys out. You guys you just just search do go to uh, Google or whatever. Not Google or G, yeah Google. And search Patreon, and they'll give you a description of what that is. But that's something that I created like a um, a week ago, and um, I'm gonna be mentioning that in, in pretty much all my videos because I have certain perks that um, I have to follow. I have to mention people and description and all that stuff. So yeah, so these my six Patreons now. I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys for the support. I really really do appreciate it. You don't. It's basically. You, it's a donation to, to, to um, just donate to support what I'm doing and what I've been doing, this type of content I've been putting out. So it's not like I'm trying to, um, I'm not, I, it's not like I'm trying to earn money for certain, for something. It's just something for support. So if you donate or not, I'm still have, I, I will still have content coming out, but I have that there for people that, that want to show support and want to participate in these perks that I offer. So yeah. I appreciate that. Now, those of you who contributed five dollars, I put your name in the description area. Um, that's one of the perks, and um, that is it. I think that's it for this video. And um, thanks for viewing. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, um, I will see you in the next video. Peace. Take care. Oh, also, I forgot to mention something. I got a um. If you guys don't know, I, I have a um, my blog. I, for the past few weeks, I've been having posts made on my blog on my website. I have somebody actually writing for me on these different topics concerning language learning. Um, my my buddy, I was about to say my brother, my buddy Brian Camus. He, I mean, he's really good at writing, and he's been writing my blog. So, um, if you guys haven't seen my blogs, um, I will post the most recent blog that he made on my website. But if you go to my website, you will, you should be able to see some previous blogs that he posted. But um, the guy is really good at writing, and um, I like what he's doing. Um, and if you're interested, if you guys need someone to write for you, if you need someone to provide content, he's the guy for you. You know, you can contact him. His name is Brian Camus. Um, I'm not sure if he has a website. Um, I'll have him comment on this video and let you guys know his website if he has one. But I'm not sure if he has one. But he's on Facebook. But um. I'll put his name in the description area and you can find him on Facebook or whatever. But yeah, I forgot to mention that. That is it. I'm out of here.